Hey there, welcome to Freedom Lovin'. This is Kevin, and this is episode number 204. And in just a minute, I am going to be uh, doing another Freedom Read from the book, 4,000 Weeks Time Management for Mortals. And this will be part two of this series. And uh, I'm excited to get into that. There's a lot of interesting ideas around time with freedom. So uh, just a couple things before then. I am wrapping up my time here in Brazil, and I will be uh, out of here in a few days. Um, I think this will be my Christmas episode because uh, it will be released right before Christmas. So uh, happy Christmas and Bon Natal if you're in <laughs> if you're in Brazil. Um, and it's uh, you know it's really getting it's the weather here has been great. It's been uh, it's get, it's it's getting a little warm, but the rain has kind of died down. It was uh, it was really rainy in the spring. Um, it's still technically spring, but it's getting into closer to summer now. And it is very strange to be in the Southern Hemisphere when Christmas is approaching because, um, you know, not getting uh, not no chance, zero chance of a white Christmas. So I um, wanted to uh, mention a couple of things. Uh, one is I got a review uh, on the for the Rebel's Guide to Freedom mm -hmm. and on Amazon, a new review. And I wanted to read that off. Um, I was really happy to to hear this because. Uh, I don't actually check on my reviews very often, but I got in today and this was actually, this one is actually like a month ago, I think November 15th. So yeah, it's about, it's about a month ago, but, um, I wanted to read this, uh, review on Amazon for the rebels guide to freedom. Uh, and here it is. So, uh, Michael Sabo, I have never read such a comprehensive, holistic, and truly deep book about freedom in my life. This book truly is a gift as it opens your mind to what your life could look like and how you have the power to truly change it on every level. It helps you to question why you have the relationships in your life, the job you have, the lifestyle you have. It poses tough questions about freedom versus safety, why you believe what you believe, the dangers of groupthink, and ways to heal and free yourself from a lifetime of propaganda and brainwashing. You learn of many additional books and authors that has helped him on his journey. He weaves personal stories and education together seamlessly. It was truly dumb luck how I even found this book, but I'm grateful I did. I will share it with every open-minded, hearted person I meet. The way to rebel is to do it. The way to rebel is to is to do it consciously. Uh, is to consciously create, not unconsciously destroy. Thank you, Kevin, for being a guide to help create true freedom in our lives. And Michael, thank you so much. I don't know if you're a listener to the podcast, but thank you so much for this review. It meant a lot to me to hear this uh, it, it, because it's a, it's a random one. I don't know who you are, and I'm, I'm so thrilled that you got value out of this book that, that I wrote. And um, if anybody's interested in picking up the book, it's uh, free. you can go to freedomlovin.com slash book to pick up a copy. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback as well. And if you're interested in writing a review, um, you can do that on Amazon. And I'd love to uh, read that off on a future episode. And by the way, talking about The Rebel's Guide to Freedom, I decided I will be doing the audiobook. I mentioned this last time, but I'm seeing it again because I, I, I'm going to start it at the end of the year. And I'm, I'm uh, planning on taking about three weeks to do it. And so I'm really hoping to get it out before February 1st. So I'm excited about that. Um, that's going to be a, a another you know project, and I'll be mentioning it on the uh, on future episodes here. I'll be talking about uh, when that you know as it's going, uh, when it's going to be coming out, and and everything. So stay tuned for that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to get into today's freedom read, and that is the uh, the four thousand weeks book. It's uh, it's four thousand weeks uh, time management time management for mortals. That's the name of the book. And uh, I, I started with a few sections last week, but I wanted to get into uh, this next chapter and it's called Facing Fortitude. And I have a few reads here and then um, we'll get into the, the, the following uh, chapters. And um, I want, I, I, I'm, I'm getting into this book because it's not a, tr it's not a typical freedom book. It's not like um, this is how to be free and here's all the, the steps to be free, but it's, a, it's just a different view on time, a different viewpoint on how to think about time. So, okay, facing fortitude. So, uh, okay, this section is uh, thrown into time. Rather than taking ownership of our lives, the, we seek out distractions 
or lose ourselves in busyness and the daily grind so as to try to forget our real predicament. Or we try to avoid the intimidating responsibility of having to decide what to do with our finite time by telling ourselves that we don't get to choose at all, that we must get married or remain in a soul-destroying job or anything else simply because it's the done thing. It's only by facing our finitude that we can step into a truly authentic relationship with life. I love that. And that goes along with some of the Rebel's Guide to Freedom. Like you, you don't have to do things just because this is what you do in life. It's uh, You can pull away from that, rebel against that, start thinking of it in terms of what you actually want. Or to put it another way, uh, why treat 4,000 weeks as a very small number? Because it's so tiny compared with infinity rather than treating it as a, as a huge number because it's so many more weeks than if you had never been born. That's a deep, deep thought to, to, to consider. Um, 4,000 weeks is a lot of time. Uh, if you really, you know, like if you've never been born, then you, you would be nothing and you would never know what it was like to be born. So, you know, this is just another idea of like, you know, take advantage of these 4,000 weeks there. That's, that's what we have. Um, at any given moment, you'll be procrastinating on almost everything. And by the end of your life, you'll have gotten around to doing virtually none of the things you theoretically could have done. So this, you know, this goes back to this uh, freedom of missing out, FOMO, freedom of missing out. You, you're going to miss out on a million things at all times, millions of things at all times. You could be doing right now, you could be doing something else besides listening to this. Um, and this is uh, from the chapter of becoming a better procrastinator, something I've struggled with, uh, struggled with becoming a better procrastinator in my life. So um, the critical question isn't how to differenti differentiate between activities that matter and those that don't, but what to do when far too many things feel at least somewhat important and therefore arguably qualify as big rocks. So that was that rocks experiment where you they, uh, the, the professor puts a bunch of big rocks into a jar and then uh, says, uh, and then it looks like it's full. And then he asks the students like, oh, do you, think, do you think the jar is full now? And they're like, yeah, it looks full. And then he goes, well, what if I uh, add in uh, some little pebbles or something like that? And then they fill it up with pebbles and then they, then they put sand in. And it's like this experiment of like, you know, you, you can, you can fill up your, uh, you can keep filling up your your jar, but uh, what what is it that qual what are the big rocks in your life? like what are what are the things that are filling up? Is that, those are the important things, right? so it's it's important to consider uh, to consider that. So uh, the point isn't to force yourself to finish absolutely everything you start, but rather to banish the bad habit of keeping an ever prolifer proliferating number of half finished projects on the back burner. I'm definitely guilty of this. Um, I, I, I tend to get involved with so many things and then I don't finish them. Um, it was no longer possible for me to ignore the fact that my capacity for work was strictly finite because each time I selected a new task for my to-do list as one of uh, three work in progress items, I was obliged to contemplate all those I'd inevitably be neglecting in order to focus on it. And then rather than trying to do everything, I found an easier con I, I found it easier to accept the truth that I'd be doing only a few things at any given time. The difference this time was that I actually did them. And uh, you needn't embrace the specific practice of listening to your goals. No, you needn't embrace the specific practice of listing your, out your goals. I don't personally. To appreciate the un underlying point, which is that in a world of too many big rocks, it's the moderately appealing ones the fairly interesting job opportunity, the semi-enjoyable friendship on which a finite life can come to grief. It's a self-help cliche that, the, that most of us need to get better at learning to say no. But as the writer Elizabeth Gilbert points out, it's all too easy to assume that this merely entails finding the courage to decline various tedious things you never wanted to do in the first place. In fact, she explains, it's much harder than that. You need to learn how to start saying no to things that you do want to do with the negotiation that you have only one life. And uh, procrastination is a strategy of emotional avoidance, a way of trying to not feel 
They're trying not to feel the psychological distress that comes with acknowledging that you're a finite human being. Okay. In consciously making a commitment, they're closing off their fantasies of infinite possibility in favor of what I described in the previous chapter as the joy of missing out. I call it the freedom of missing out. The recognition that the renunciation of alternatives is what makes their choice a meaningful one in the first place. This is also why it can be unexpectedly calming to take actions you've been fearing or delaying to finally hand in your notice at work, become a parent, address a festering family issue, or close on a house purchase. When you can no longer turn back, anxiety falls away because now there's only one direction to travel, forward into the consequences of your choice. So I, I really like that chapter. I thought that was that was a enlightening, especially for me as a procrastinator to read and, you know, why we do these things, you know, kind of really reflecting on why we're, um, why would we engage in something like procrastination? Why would we be taking on so many projects? You know, it, it, it's not going to cause you to feel like you have more time to do this. So the next chapter is the watermelon problem. Uh, the only faculty you can use to see what's happening to your attention is your attention. The very thing that's already been commandeered. This means that once the attention economy has rendered you sufficiently distracted or annoyed or on edge, it becomes easy to assume that this is just what life, just what life these days inevitably feels like. Yeah, that's this is talking about the social media, you know, getting um, spending your time on various social media channels and networks. And um, it, it's, it's, it kind of goes to my point of like, there's this fake world. There's this, uh, there's this idea that the world is this way, the world is that way. And you get on Twitter and you see people arguing about things and you go, oh, well, that's how the world is. And then, but then you realize that like, this is like, I, I think some really tiny percentage of Americans have a Twitter account. Now out of those tiny percentage, even a much smaller percentage actually get on there and tweet. So there's, you just have a few people tweeting things and causing this big, stir and and then you have the the algorithms that make it so that you are naturally seeing things that that are controversial and it's just a perception that that things are crazy things are you know people are crazy and, and it's you know it's if you if you uh pay attention to what you're focusing on you know what is it that you are what, what is it that you are focusing on um that's going to make a, a a really big difference you know it's like i was seeing this the other day is like um i'm here in brazil and there's people are saying, oh, there's what's going on in Brazil. There's, I see that there's uh, all these protests and stuff. And it's like, I have no idea. I haven't seen a protest yet. <laughs> I have no, like I, where I am, I have, there's been, you know, it's, it's pretty close to the beach. There's not a lot of, there's, there's, I haven't been, I haven't seen any protests. If I didn't, you know, people didn't ask me about it. I would just, and if I didn't see anything on social media, I would just say, yeah, there's nothing going on in Brazil. There's nothing, nothing different than normal that's going on here. So you know, I mean, it's, you know, there are some things that you can say, oh, prices have gone up and things like that. But, um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's much better to focus on what you can control. You know, it's just that same old adage. It's like, what can you control? What's your sphere of influence? So that's really all I had uh, for today. I'm going to stop there with, with the, with the reading, but um, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to, I'm going to finish up this book, hopefully next, next time, but I wanted to get into it because I think it, it just, you know, it can, it can kind of give you a, this idea of, of having, you know, actually feeling like you have more time. I mean, you know, time is just something that we all have the same amount of, but then it's like how we actually are spending it makes a huge difference in how it feels. Does it feel like your life is, is just rushing by? When you look back at your past, do you think, oh, I just wasted so much time? Or do you think like, wow, I really lived it up. I really uh, took advantage of all this time. And, you know, it's, um, it's interesting to think about it having just 4,000 weeks and how, you know, yeah, maybe we'll have 5,000 if we live to a hundred or something, but, but that's, you know, that's, it's just like, you know, it, it really comes down to uh, making the most of, of the, of the moments of the, of the present, you know, and not, not, uh, you know, getting through the obstacles and, and, and not uh, dwelling and not staying in things that, that take away from life, you know, sort of eliminating the things that take away from your enjoyment of time. So anyway, I'm going to get into a little bit more of that next time. And um, really appreciate you listening. Thanks so much. Go out there and build some freedom this week. Um, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and we will talk to you soon.